This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our season will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the smoked, the discor, the old-fashioned, and the Mad Hatter. Can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to check out the three box sets. You just send it the sweet heat and the whole hog to save even more on your favorite seasonings. And you can also save even more on top of that by using the promo code sloopcast10, that is sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% more off of your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who is the Iron Bean Coffee Company? They're an Ohio-based uh, Toledo, General Ch- Toledo anyway, veteran-owned, small-batch, roast-to-order, craft coffee company. Where can you go wrong with any of that? Well, Jared, do we know the beans are fair trade certified? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The beans are fair trade. Yeah, but are they organic? They sure are. What? It's almost like this is a flawless coffee company. Is it a coffee company based first and foremost on integrity. In fact, they have a coffee called the Integrity. It's a dark roast. It's the mainstay of the Iron Bean selection. Dark roasted, perfect for espressos. And if you're into dark roast, they also have the Fear No Evil, which is not just a dark roast, but a black roast. It's roasted to the brink of flames. Rich, black, void of all light, has the sheen of polished armor and the feel of cocoa butter. You can find that coffee and a lot more coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. (sighs) Did I do that in one breath? I think you did. How's it going today, YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. What's up? I'm sort of I'm sort of drinking coffee right now. Ah, (laughs) Uh, the camera. The camera she won't focus, but it's a it's a Cool Beans by Jack Yeo's. Uh, It's a golden ale. Nice. With coffee, of course. Coffee golden ale. You know, I figured it's late, but it's not that late. So, yeah, best of both worlds. A little bit of upper, a little bit of downer. All right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you today, Jared? I don't know. I feel very fast talky today. Yeah. Uh, I, that's it. I don't have a follow up to that. Don't 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 keep poking that. It's it's already dead. You know who is not dead? The Columbus Crew. Champions. Oh my goodness. Champions. What an a what a day to be what a week to be an Ohioan. What a day to be an Ohioan. You have the Columbus Crew MLS champions. You have I need the Ohio one of these. Yeah, you'll get one. They'll have <laughs> the Ohio State Buckeyes, soon to be Big Ten champions. Uh everyone's hated team right now. Because the Big Ten, shocker, I don't remember if this had happened or if we just really expected it to happen last time we recorded. I honestly forget where that happened in the timeline, but the Big Ten changed the rule to allow the Big Ten, or excuse me, to allow the Ohio State Buckeyes into the Big Ten championship game. And people are upset. But those same people, but those same people would be even more upset if they didn't. Because if they didn't, where would the Big Ten Championship game be right now? It would be Northwestern versus Indiana, maybe. Because Indiana Indiana has a massive COVID outbreak right now. So either that game gets canceled or you have to fill another team in for Penn State. And since since Indiana's out, since Ohio State wouldn't qualify under the old rule, guess who would be your Big Ten East representatives? Three win Penn State! So, yikes. All, all we did was 
we, we moved the articles of everyone making fun of the Big Ten up a week. Because instead of making fun of them this week for having Penn State in the championship game with a losing record, they just made fun of the Big Ten last week for changing the rules for Ohio State because Ohio State, da 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 Sometimes it's the right thing to do. One thing I don't understand, Jared. It's a rule compi- that they arbitrarily made up at the beginning of the season. They can arbitrarily change it. It's it's not a yeah. big deal. Well, going to a broader scope, everybody complaining about Ohio State should it be in because they only played five games, do, 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 six games, whatever, whatever the case may be. It will it will be six games. It after, will be six. Yes. Yeah. You know who they're not complaining about? Undefeated USC. Well, it's because no one's putting USC in the playoff. Well, here here's something funny, and again, this is complete shit. I don't I don't I don't take it with any grain of salt. But according to this, you would take it with a grain of salt. Yes. Okay. According to this make believe FPI poll here, the percentage to make the playoffs. Sure. Bama, 99%. Mm-hmm. Ohio State, 88%. Okay. Notre Dame, 69%. Okay, nice. And guess who comes in at number four? Clemson. USC hmm. at 49%. And then Clemson at 45% and Texas A&M at 34%. So USC does not belong in the playoff. And no, I'm not about to say due to a lack of football games. Okay. It's a lack of football games mixed with how they've been playing. Mm-hmm. So I think three, I think three of their five wins have been within five points. They have not been very decisive. And all three of those games were against bad teams mm-hmm. that they made, that they launched comebacks against to win. We aren't talking like Ohio state had some games that were closer than they should have been. They let Indiana get back into it late when, by letting them score some second half points, they let Penn state get back into it late by letting them score some second and a half po- second half points. USC on the other hand had to be the team that was scoring all those second half points to get back into the game, which is mm-hmm. a significant difference in my mind. Yeah. And also let, let, let's not, let's not USC forget. does not have a win over top 10 Indiana. USC does not have an opportunity to play top 15 Northwestern this week. A couple, couple, couple of things about that. One, going back to you saying that Indiana needed to come back to that game to US. make it close. Oh, okay, yeah. Ohio State was still up by, what was it, 28, 35 points with three turnovers still. Yes. Did you they hear still look dominant. Did- with all the turnovers that they had as well. Did you hear that? Did you hear that Florida? You can turn the ball over several times and still be in the football game. It's possible. It's as long as you don't throw a shoe. As long as you don't throw a shoe. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, Ohio state was up 35 to three in the but, third quarter against Indiana. But here's, here's, here's the second. And thing that was too. with being, I know they committed three turnovers. Were they minus three or minus two? I'm not sure if they had a turnover, but yeah, your, your point remains the same Kyle. But here, here's the other thing, too, in defense to the Pac-12, in, in defense. Sure. Where did they, where did the committee or anybody else rank the Pac-12 before they started the season? Way down. They, they Not Oregon. Yeah, except for Oregon. Oregon and Oregon just not having a good year no. as one as they would hope to have. They had a bunch of key players opt out at the beginning of the season and not opt back in like what happened at many of the Mm -hmm. Eastern programs. So in a way it's almost, it's almost like the PAC 12 or set was set up to fail right from the start based off of the preseason rankings. Well, rankings is trash and should never happen. And and I know it, I know it doesn't really mean anything, but, in a way, it kind of does. Well, it means something because it exists. Mm-hmm. But one, and this is not USC's fault, because Ohio State had to fight back from this as well. Let's not forget that Ohio State, before all of the shenanigans happened with the Big Ten, they were ranked number two in the country. Mm-hmm. And they had to fight and claw to get back. At, well, they never did get back to number two. They've not yet got back to number two. Nope. So Ohio State was dropped from number two 
and I forget where they were during the, and I don't care because I don't even forget. I think I actually just don't know. Like where was Ohio state ranked? Cause they, cause the AP, I don't know about the coaches, but the AP dropped them all the big 10 teams from the polls those first couple of weeks. So Ohio state was just not ranked for a moment. Now, after their first week back, I believe they were put back into the polls, but they weren't put back into the polls where they left from the preseason. So Ohio State had to fight up that hill as well. And, and don't come at me with brand names because USC's brand is as strong as anyone else's brand, although maybe not true over the past couple years. USC, had they won their games more convincingly, i.e. not having to come back against really bad teams. Even, and I'm not saying they even had to blow teams out. I'm just saying beat inferior teams by two touchdowns. Or at least beat up comfortably in those games in the fourth quarter. Then I think they'd be better represented in the polls than they currently are. That's, that's just my opinion. Am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. But I don't know. Is... I think I have, they're playing next week against Washington. Who's three and one, not ranked. I, what, what does that do for them? Do do we even know if Washington, if USC wins that game? I don't, I mean, I, I just, I don't know anything about Washington. Washington's only played four games. USC's only played five games. 2020 is weird. And when it comes to USC, who's five and O and Ohio state, who are also five and O you also have to take a look at how they won those games. Quite frankly, their track record. And I know under normal circumstances, we should not, we should not take 2019. We should not take the previous season into account. We really, really should never, ever do that. But if there was ever a year to do it, I think 2020 is the year to do it. We Mm -hmm. know what this team is capable of. There's no doubt we've been, Kyle and I've been saying it since September. There's three teams in everybody else. Now, maybe Notre Dame has worked their way into that conversation. I don't think so. I think that Clemson knocks Notre Dame all the way the hell out of the playoff this weekend. I don't think but, that's going to happen, but well, we we'll, we can we can talk about that. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll talk about that. But in my mind, and this has been the case since the beginning of the season, and I'm not off of this at all. There are three teams above all the other teams. It's Bama, Ohio State, and Clemson, and Clemson in no particular order. Now, from September to now, I actually now believe that Ohio State's a little bit better than Clemson. Although I don't necessarily know how well that translates to the field because Clemson's going to pass all over Ohio State. That's and that that's just the reality of that situation. But I think Ohio State can also pass all over Clemson and can run all over Clemson, which were two things I was not sure about at the beginning of the season. Also, what I've learned since the beginning of the season is that I think Bama is in fact a notch above. I think I think maybe back in September, I was saying it's Ohio state and Clemson with Bama, maybe a half notch below them. I now believe Bama is a half notch above them. Mm -hmm. And then you have a, a group of other teams who are also pretty good. And I still have Notre Dame in that team. Now I have Notre Dame as the first team in that second tier, but they're still to me in that second tier. And I think Clemson will, will, prove me right this Saturday in, in that estimation. I don't That's, I forget why I even started talking about that point is, is that nowhere in any of that, that I'd mentioned USC. Yeah, it's, it, it's tough. It is 2020. It, it is what it is. I, I don't, even even if you want to give USC uh, the benefit of the doubt and maybe put them into the playoffs here as a conference champion, if if they were to win, I still think they would get demolished by the other three teams that you just mentioned too, Jared. 
but we'll get Kyle, into that here in a little bit. Well, um, is it time to get into our playoff scenarios or is there anything else you want well, to talk about first? Yeah, there's one 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 bit of news here that we kind of covered a little bit in last week's episode, on Friday's episode. Um, we have a, an official commitment yes. from Emeka Egbuka. Absolutely. Ohio State. Five-star five star wide receiver out of Washington has given his verbal commitment to the good guys at Ohio State. Yeah, uh, not a surprise. Uh, this is, although a, a, a commitment we were a little worried about minus seven days ago. But by the time we had went to record last Thursday, a name we were feeling good about again, and a name who we had been feeling really good about for about seven months. Now, did we waver? Did we get a little bit concerned there at the beginning of last week? Yes. There's a lot of positive buzz coming out of Oklahoma. Once that buzz sort of wore off, it everything sort of came back to level, and Emeka Buka is now a Buckeye. Kyle is, and this is this is an outrageous statement considering he's now only in his second year as an official Ohio State coach. Is Brian Hartline the goat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I'm. I have to pull up the exact number, but I believe he is now the number one. Nope. According to twenty four seven, he is the fifth. Yeah, it's quantity over quality sometimes reigns in those rankings. But look at the names he's pulled in the last two years. He pulled in the yeah. best wide receiving core in the twenty nineteen class excuse me, in the 2020 class, and is now about to do the same thing in the 2021 class. He has average in the top 10 uh, recruiting coaches. Yeah. Has the best average at 97.7. Jeez. Two. Wow. That's... And right, be and right behind him is Charles Huff, the running back coach for Alabama at 97 point two seven yeah people are like oh then it's a, what, what happened with ohio state and jc latham that's what happened yes yeah. all right yeah. kyle the last two years mm -hmm. brian hartline has recruited to ohio state julian fleming a top 10 wide receiver or excuse me a top five wide receiver depending upon which ranking you look at maybe the number one wide receiver of the 2020 class mm -hmm. Emeka buka Top 10 player in the entire country. Caleb Burton for the 2022 class. Now, 2022, we're a year out there. Stuff can happen, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But top 20 player in the entire 2022 class, number two wide receiver. Mm -hmm. 2020 class, Jackson Smith Ninjimba. Top 30 overall player, top five wide receiver top in the 2020 class. Mm-hmm. G. Scott Jr. of the 2020 class. Top 100 player, top 10 wide receiver. Jaden Ballard of Maslin, Ohio, by the way. 2021 class. Top 100 overall, top 10 wide receiver. Marvin Harrison Jr., yes, his son, of the 2021 class. Top 100 player, top 15 wide receiver. Mookie Cooper of the 2020 class. Top 100 player, Basically a top 15 wide receiver. He's number 16. That's insane. Oh, and, and by the way, he's also a secondary recruit for Kyle McCord and CJ Stroud. Oh, just two just of the to, best just quarterbacks? Just put the little cherry on top. Just two of the best quarterbacks from the last two years? That's it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just, that's it. Yeah, uh, guys, we went over our expectations for the uh, na early national signing period in our Friday episode. So if you want to hear, I think we're, we're going to end our recruiting talk there as much as we'd like to continue. Mm -hmm. But there'll be time for that in the off season, And we uh, devoted a fair amount of time to that in the Friday episode, if you want to go back and listen to that. We uh, talked about our expectations and sort of preview the early signing period. It's just one episode back. Make sure to listen to that if you want to hear more recruiting talk. Okay, Kyle, let's talk some playoffs now. All right. 
All right. What do you want to start with here? Do you want to do our our projection? No, well, no. no, we, no. We we'll save that. the projections. We're, save the projections. We're going, to, we're going to talk about who we believe are the top teams. Yes. The top teams here. So who, I think. We, wait a minute. Do you want to do that now? Or do you want to. Uh, let's do scenarios first. Okay. All right. I'm fine with that. First, we, but actually, no, let's do that second. Can we talk about Dabo Sweeney first? I'd rather not. <laughs> Dabo I'd Sweeney not. out there recruiting hard against Ohio State to get into the playoffs. I wonder why. Huh? He's scared. I wonder why. He's scared. He's scared. Of course he's scared. Despite the fact. Kyle, do you want to read this? Yeah. Despite, Despite the, fact, the fact that the beginning of the, before this all started, he said it season. should not matter. He said it should not matter. Go, he says here. Go for uh, the exact quote, Kyle. Go get it. All right, here we go. Uh, Dabo was asked if he had a problem, again, before the season, asked if he had a problem with the potential college football team, playoff team playing less games. No. I think it's a crazy year. You know how, who knows how many games anybody is going to have. I think if they started in November, I don't think that would have been possible. You got you got some of the best players in the country in that league. Those players fought and those coaches fought. They've worked their tails off. So just so we're clear. Dabo Sweeney. Just so we're clear. Before Dabo Sweeney knew exactly how many teams Clemson was going to get to play, because back who, who back then who knew? Maybe maybe Clemson could have been the one sitting there with five or six wins only. So before he knew, he was like, nah, it shouldn't matter. 2020 is weird. And I agree with everything that the S- September, August, yep. I don't know when this was. Uh, let's say September. It September. Was, yeah, we'll say September. I forget which time. It's but. Before everyone started playing. Mm-hmm. So zero and zero Dabo. September Dabo, I agree with. It's 2020. The teams can only play the games that they're available to play. And there needs to be a lot of exceptions and a lot of forgiveness given to teams based off of how many games they played. This is essentially what September Dabo was saying. November, December Dabo, on the other hand, is out here telling people that Ohio State didn't play enough games. Which just goes to show that despite his public persona, which is that he's basically, Dabo likes to pretend like he's Ned Flanders. That, that's, that's who he likes to be in the media. Dabo is instead basically just Kmart Nick Saban. And I forgive Nick Saban for being Nick Saban because Nick Saban owns the fact that he, Nick Saban doesn't pretend to be anyone else. He's a, he's a curmudgeon old man who puts football first and you know what? He owns it. He's about it. So I forgive him for it. I can forgive someone for having different priorities in their life than me. I can forgive someone for maybe not having the best attitude or for not having patience for the media. I can forgive people for their flaws. I am also a human. I also have flaws. I, I, whatever forgiveness I expect from other people, I expect me to also give that forgiveness to other people. What I can't stand, however, is when people are phonies about it. And that's what Dabo is. If you want to be this guy, Don't then pretend to be someone else, which if I'm being real honest with everyone is why I don't put Trestle on the same mountaintop that a lot of Ohio state fans do because Trestle had a bit of that Ned Flanders in front of the camera covering for trail prior behind the scenes aspect to him as well. Yeah. Another coach I would put on, on there too, Dan Mullen. I think Dan Dan Mullen also kind of I'll, I'll I'll give Dan his, Mullen's his, a little his, closer. He's a little his, closer to Nick Saban in owning the fact that he's an asshole. Well, it, he doesn't he doesn't take responsibility for his losses too. 
Like the uh, first yeah. loss, well, the first loss to Texas A and M, he was all, well, if we were able, well, if te- well, if Texas A and M can have these many fans in the in the stadium, I want this many fans in my stadium too. Yeah, he he was actively pushing for one hundred percent attendance in the swamp, and then got COVID a few days later. He also kind of incited a player fight at at, at one point this season, and and then. Um, he basically turned his post-game press conference into, well, if Ohio State only gets to play this many games, why do I have to play this many games? Which is pretty hilarious considering that Ohio State does play, under normal circumstances, an extra conference game every year when the SEC doesn't. When Ohio State is playing a conference game, Kyle, I lost your camera. Kyle, are you with me, Kyle? Oh, boy. Here we go. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. YouTube, I'm officially just talking to YouTube right now. This won't make it into the audio podcast. I'm down a Kyle. Kyle. This is just me talking. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see, let's see. Sorry, YouTube, working on it. Kyle's internet went down. He's rebooting his modem. You know what, guys? What we're going to do real quick, I'm going to slide me back over into this frame. Uh, We're going to do an ad break while we wait for Kyle. That's what we're going to do. So... Uh, Let's do the ad break while we wait for Kyle and his internet reboots. So first, let's talk about the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, uh, right here, I got the Cajun. Everyone knows what Cajun tastes like. Bring some of that Cajun flavor home. Camera's not going to focus. Technology hates me. Our pets' heads are falling. That's the second podcast in a row I made that joke. Uh, The Discord. This is the spicy sweet Uh, This is in the sampler box that uh, Mad Canadian calls his wing box. Uh, It's the sweet heat box. That's what it's called. The sweet heat box also has the four horsemen, which is a bit more of a salty, spicy mix. Uh, Let's see. Uh, If you're looking for a gift for someone who does not cook too often, uh, then I would actually probably go ahead and recommend the just send it box, which includes the Sonoran heat, the Cajun, and the smoked, uh, and also the S&P bud. So that's four. And those are amazing starter packs uh, because they can kind of go on anything. That's why I really like them. Uh, if you're, I, I always refer to the S&P bud as the potato cheat code. It really doesn't matter what kind of potato you're making, whether it be a baked potato or a mashed potato, uh, some pan fried tomatoes, hash browns, really doesn't matter. I go with the S&P bud, absolute potato cheat code right there and the camera still hates me but that's okay uh make sure to check out the mad canadian social media pages to find out what's the newest thing with the mad canadian and make sure to use promo code sloopcast10 that's sloopcast10 at checkout to get 10 percent off your entire order that's the mad canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered all right uh kyle just sent me a message Let me go back to Kyle. Oh, there he is. Uh, Let's leave and join. There's Kyle coming into the meeting. Hey, there he is. Kyle, I just did the Mad Canadian read because I was killing time waiting for you to come back. 
So I just did that. So now I'm going to do the uh, the coffee read with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a hand roasted micro batch roast to order. You're getting the freshest beans possible. Roast to order coffee company. Some of their most popular flavors, including the Fierce, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, and the Ride or Die are available in K-Cup, if that is your thing. Many of the beans are available both in pre-ground and whole bean. Uh, you get free shipping over $50, and you have the opportunity to buy the six-pack, which is kind of a sampler pack. Instead of getting uh, one big bag or maybe two big bags of a, of a full pound of coffee, the sampler bags, which are about this size, uh, are a quarter pound. This is, these are four ounce coffees. So these are tremendous, if you're, especially if you're shopping for someone else, or if you're, maybe it's your very first order with the Iron Bean Coffee Company, uh, you can go ahead and do the sampler pack so you can find out which ones you like the most so far. I'm more of a medium roast guy. That's just my personal preference. Uh, that's why I think my two favorites so far are the ride or die as, as previously shown. And also I got the cast iron in one of those little sampler bags. And I tell you this much, the next time I go to buy a, a big bag from the mad, not from the mad Canadian, from the iron bean coffee company is probably going to be a, a big thing of the cast iron. I really, really liked that. There are also flavored coffees available if that's more your speed. Uh, but a lot of uh, a great selection of both dark and medium roast. And there's also the Loki, which is a sort of a medium light roast. If, if that's more your speed, you can find all of that and more at the at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, I kept the boat afloat while you were gone. Thank you. Good job. Good job. All right. <laughs> All right, we ready to talk about scenarios. Scenarios, yes. So let's let's just go ahead. This is an Ohio State podcast. Let's just go ahead and assume that Ohio State has a a good win. That doesn't have to be a blowout. Let's just say a. All right. So they're they're currently, as we're recording this, they are a twenty point favorite. So let's say they win by fourteen. 14 okay. Fourteen points. Fourteen points. That's that's a that's a good win. Good win. By the way, I want the over in that game. I'm calling my shot early on that. All right. Okay, so let's say that happens. Yep. Uh, now, let's say that Alabama wins. And I think previous to this week, it would have mattered how Alabama won. But with Florida losing to LSU in hashtag shoegate, I think it no longer matters. Mm -hmm. it, it, it no, actually, I kind of think this game doesn't matter at all. The only way I think this game matters is if Florida somehow absolutely blows out Alabama, which I don't think is a, a thing that's going to happen. They need to cause a lot of turnovers. Yeah, that's essentially what would have to happen. And if Florida absolutely blew out Alabama, then maybe they could get into the playoff, but not even then. The only thing that would really for sure cause in my mind is forcing Alabama out, but it would have to be a real embarrassment to force Alabama out or to get Florida in. It would have to just be a complete bludgeoning, like what UNC did to um, Miami, Miami over the weekend. It would mm -hmm. have to basically be one of those. Yep. So let's just say Alabama wins. It doesn't matter how. Okay. So in this scenario, I believe 100% that Alabama and Ohio State are in. And we, we can talk about seeding in, in a little bit. The biggest thing, the biggest game with the biggest amount of influence this week is Notre Dame and Clemson. Kyle, is it possible for both of these teams to make the playoff? Yes. I agree. Describe the scenario in which both Clemson and Notre Dame make the playoff, solidifying our top four. By the way, does that, let's, just, let's just say it's a three overtime game. And then someone wins. So let's just say that. A hyper close game. So if it's a hyper close game. Does that solidify the top four? We can talk about seeding at a later time. Does that solidify the top four in a three overtime win by a field goal game? That's that's tough. That that's really tough because you have a two loss team. Yes, you would. 
you would have a, t- let's say if, Clemson would lose. Yes. Clemson loses. That's a two loss team getting into the playoffs, which has who, not happened. Who are you putting in to replace them? It's got to be whoever's at five. So at this point, if it's Texas A&M and they, like, and they look good against, against Tennessee, Tennessee. Does it matter what they do against Tennessee? Really? I all they have to do against Tennessee is not lose. I I, I don't think it matters honestly. And I, Kyle, I would tend to agree. Can can we look at Texas A and M for a second? Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at Texas A and M. They beat Auburn by eleven points. If Auburn, know, Auburn's not a good team. Auburn's a bad team. They literally just fired their coach. So anyone out there who's trying to tell us, oh no, Auburn's a quality wit. No, they're not. No, just stop right there. LSU. I know LSU just beat Florida on the back of a bunch of turnovers. I get it, but they beat LSU by only 11 points or 13 points. How in how, how many points did Alabama beat, <laughs> beat oh, LSU? I'm, I'm, a lot. A lot. And how many points did... Alabama B Texas A&M by a lot, <laughs> a lot. Uh, the exact number quick math would be 27, 28, 28 points. So this is, so this is the same kind of argument as with Ohio state with their one bad loss where they got, where they lost by a lot. In defense, this was not Iowa or Purdue. This was Alabama, to be fair. Okay. I To be fair. Okay. All right, to be fair. But you know what? If you're, if you're supposed to be a playoff team... Sure. You're not keeping up with a playoff team. I, you know, Kyle, that's a good point. Because with Purdue or Iowa, you can make the trap game argument. You can make the... They're obviously the better team, but they just happened to lose that night argument in, in the case of Ohio State. But no no one's walking, especially since week one they played Bam or they played Vanderbilt before, which by the way, they only beat Vanderbilt by five points. And then you walk into Alabama. By the way, I, I don't, I'm not even going to crap on them for beating Vanderbilt by only five. You had Bama the next week. It was the very first game during a chaotic offseason. season. You beat you beat Vanderbilt. I don't care. I'm not going to trash on you for having a weird game in week one. I'm not going to do it. And it was a close one, a lot closer than anticipated against Arkansas. They beat Arkansas by 11 points. And ha- how many points did uh, Alabama just beat Arkansas by this last weekend? Uh, not as many as they could have had they kept trying. A lot. Yeah. Point is, is that Texas A&M is not is not that great. I get that they're in the SEC West and they went 7-1. and one, And under normal circumstances during normal years, that would be incredibly impressive. It really, really would be. The SEC West is normally a complete powerhouse. But Auburn was bad this year. LSU was a joke this year. Neither of the Mississippi schools were any dang good. It was just Bama. And... Yep. Texas A&M was, te- I mean, they're, they're a good team. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sit here and say, Oh, Texas I, A&M is bad. Actually. They're not bad, goes, but they also back. aren't a, they also aren't a top five football team. Yeah. I think this goes back to what you first said. There are, there are three, maybe four teams. If you include uh Notre Dame there. And then it's a big drop off from right there. Yeah. So it kind of makes me feel like even even if Clemson do does lose, which was the point I was trying to move you towards, I I, I think you would still keep Clemson in if it's like a close field goal game, overtime game. I Kyle, think you would you would have to keep Clemson in the here. rule the more we that have... we're talking about this. The whole scenario is here. Now, if Notre Dame just wins outright by like two touchdowns or more. Yeah. I don't think Clemson's happen, done, but Clemson's done. You put Texas A&M in because I don't, I don't see who else you can put in there. I really don't. Can, can I throw some names out there? 
Oh, maybe Iowa State. Iowa State would actually be two a losses. good one. It is two losses. But the caveat with them, though, conference champion. Conference champion. That would champion. be the little caveat on top that I think would put them above Texas A&M, despite them having one more loss. They feel a bit like Ohio State in 2015, where we have to bring back the arbitra- or the albatross word. Yeah. <laughs> like they lost to a Sunbelt team. But you know what? Let's let's just put USC in there. An undefeated conference Kyle, champion in there. Kyle, we're forgetting about our neighbors to the or my neighbors to the south anyway. <sighs> they your, keep dropping your, they keep dropping Cincinnati. Your, I just Your sister is an alumni there, man. Come on. I have to bring up Cincinnati? I know, I know. Undefeated. But the committee keeps dropping them I every know. week, it seems. I know. Coastal Carolina sitting there. That's my problem is people keep talking about, oh, well, can, how does Ohio State make the playoff if da, 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 da? I'm sitting here making the case that who the hell do you replace Clemson with if Clemson loses? I, who's the fourth team? Who Who is it? I don't see it. I don't see a fourth team. I love the story of Coastal Carolina and I love the story of Cincinnati. But if you honestly believe either of those teams could stay on the field with Ohio State or Bama or Clemson, you're kidding yourself. Because at this point here, taking taking that Alabama is going to win here, who's going who's going to be the one to um to get stomped by Alabama in the first game there. Cause I really, th- I really think here that if Ohio state wins, doesn't matter to me, does not matter if Clemson or Notre Dame wins, Ohio state will move up to three. will play the winner of the Clemson Notre Dame game. Yeah. In my final, this was a thing I talked about with uh, Tom Moore during the Friday edition of the morning scoop. No matter what happens, I fully believe that Ohio State will be ranked either number two or number three in the final. Not not this Tuesday. They might be three. They might be four. I don't care. This this Tuesday doesn't matter. I am once again not going to watch. I haven't watched any of the playoff selection shows this year. I don't plan on it this Tuesday either. Ohio State will be ranked number two or number three. What the committee will not do. And they, they claim up and down. They claim up and down and sideways and left and right that they don't pay attention to the matchups. They they just will put number one at number one, number two at number two, number three, number three, number four, number four. And they pay no attention to the matchups. Bull shit. If you think if the things line up just right, if let's say... Clemson wins a squeaker, a three overtime, three point game against Notre Dame. If you think there is, and let's say Ohio State has a real crappy win against Northwestern, maybe that should put us in a scenario in which Clemson and Notre Dame are number two and number three at some order, and Ohio State's number four. The committee will not set up. No, uh, Notre Dame Clemson number three for the season. They simply won't do it. Nope. Ohio State, if they beat Northwestern, will I, I'm almost certain will be number three. Yes. Almost certain I, will be number three in the finals. They're more likely to be number two than number four. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look at it right now. You got two and three going at it. Winner will be the conference champion. They'll be at two. One of those two will be at two. And the one that's going to drop down behind a conference champion team in Ohio State, which is why I think they'll go to three. And then if Clemson wins, Notre Dame would still be fourth. I think that's going to be best case scenario if you are in the committee right now. As you're hoping for a Clemson win, but keep it close. Keep it close to have the argument that Notre Dame is still one of the four top teams, which 
I, I think they are based off of every team that I'm seeing here. That's what the committee is really hoping for is a close victory for Clemson. That way you can go Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Notre Dame. All right, Kyle, uh, we have some scenario questions from our listeners. Mm -hmm. This is from Stuart underscore E4 US Vet. Let's say Florida loses to three and five LSU. <laughs> yeah, let's say that. Uh, he, By the way, he sent this yesterday at 1120 p.m. He's being facetious. And then goes on to beat Alabama in the SEC championship. Then Clemson beats Notre Dame. What will your final four be in that order? Also, Ohio State beats Northwestern handedly. Does that put um, does that put Clemson Florida back Clemson in? Would be one. Clemson would be one. Yeah. Ohio State would be two. Ohio State would be two. I think you would put... Could Ohio State be number one in that scenario? I don't see any scenario, any scenario, Jared, where they would put Ohio State one. I don't. Is it possible that Bama remains number one in that scenario? No. It's going to be, if in this scenario right here, if if Alabama loses, Clemson or Notre Dame would be number one. Now you can argue, well, is, should Alabama be three or should Ohio State be three? I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that one's going to be the difficult one. I mean, I mean, I think a conference champion should be graded higher than a non-champion. So I think Ohio State should be three and then Alabama four. So that would be, well, Ohio State would be two. Yeah, that's, so you're saying, <laughs> yeah. the champion, so in this scenario, Clemson would be So Clemson one, one, Ohio State two. Two. You could probably put Alabama three. It's and probably Notre, what I would say. And no, well, of course, they're not going to put Notre Dame four nope. because they're not going to set up a Clemson-Notre Dame rematch. They aren't going to do it at two and three, and they aren't going to do it at one and four. And don't forget, in this scenario, Florida beat Bama. So would that put Florida and so not they, Notre Dame? Because Florida is an SEC, is a conference champion, yeah. and Notre Dame isn't. Would that put Florida at number four? Because I, I think it was. Because I keep seeing that Florida potentially is going to be like at 10 or even higher than 10 for when the next rankings come out. So then you're pretty much saying you got someone who's the outside eight, the top 10 going all the way to the fourth ranking then. That's, that's a that's big jump. Tough, especially when you have undefeated teams there like Cincinnati. Uh-huh. Oh, so now you're talking about Cincinnati <laughs> like it's not crazy. You know, I'm tired of your flip-flopping, Kyle. Uh, Florida, uh, we well, we obviously won't know what the playoff committee thinks until Tuesday, but according to the AP, Florida is now number 11 after losing to LSU. And it's not a good loss either. No. They were 23-point favorites in that game. 23 point home favorite. I really don't know how much home matters. They had, they had quite a few I, fans. I, there. Yeah, I know, but it's not the same. In the fog chair, though. The oh, fog. the fog. Oh, Kyle, I forgot about the fog. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, let's just put Florida in. I forgot about the fog. All right. All right. No, another scenario here, Jared. This one's from Austin, our buddy Austin. If the predicted scenario occurs Clemson, Bama, Ohio state all win. So that's Clemson, Bama, Ohio state. Mm -hmm. We know it'll be Bama one, Clemson two, OSU three, Notre Dame four. I, I don't know that it's Notre Dame four. I think it will be, but if Clemson mm -hmm. slaughters Notre Dame, maybe not. We'll so, but probably, but if Notre Dame wins, who gets the fourth spot? I think that's a thing we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I still think it's Clemson cause I just don't know who you replace them with. Maybe I'm shocked and they actually put in Cincinnati. I think it probably should be. I don't think a two loss team what if, belongs what if, yeah, in there. What if Cincinnati, I mean, currently they are a 13 and a half point favor. Say they win by 21 points. Sure. 21 plus points there. I just That's... don't see it happening. I think it probably should happen, but I, I don't think it will. I, I still think that 
a two loss Clemson gets that number four spot and their punishment for losing twice is having to play Bama in round one. And quite frankly, from a purely like easiest road standpoint, if you're Ohio state, you want to play Notre Dame. You, mm-hmm. you want to play Texas A&M. So you want to play, but I don't know. If Texas I don't know. A&M's like, gonna happen. I feel like Notre Dame's defense is better this year than Clemson from what I've seen throughout the year. Yeah, potentially, but not good enough to stop Ohio state. Yeah. That, that's it's, it's Ohio state's that, defense. At least if you're, if Ohio, you're Ohio state, state defense you, is you not know, very good this year, but their offense is so explosive that I don't know if it matters, but you know, Ohio state could run against Clemson. Yeah. Notre or Clemson struggled running against Notre Dame. Ohio state could struggle as well too. I feel like Ohio state would be able to move the ball easier on Ohio both fa- on both phases, passing and running against Ohio Clemson. State's run blocking better now than they were at the beginning of the season. Yep. And in a game against in a playoff game, you basically take the actual quarterback running back read option and actually make it an option again. Ohio state will you can tell if Ohio State's taking an opponent seriously by if they're allowing Justin Fields to actually keep the ball on a read option. That's their tell. And against Notre Dame, they're going to let Justin Fields keep the ball on the read option, which makes that read option three, four times more effective. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is from Young Kiz Midwest. With the recent loss to LSU for Florida, of to Florida, Uh, Do you think there is now a distinct possibility UC has a chance to make the fourth spot or are we already solidified Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State? Again, uh, something we've largely already talked about. I think what you need to open up that fourth spot is a complete bludgeoning. Mm-hmm. I, I, Ohio State losing is actually the easiest way to open up that fourth spot, but we're not talking about that. We're not putting that on the table. If a complete bludgeoning of either Notre Dame or Clemson, one of those teams has to just get Oklahoma straight out of the playoffs. So I, I, I think that fourth spot could come open. It's entirely possible. I don't think we're 100% set on our four teams. I just don't know that that last team to come in is Cincinnati or not. Maybe it should be. I just don't know that it is. I really just don't think it is. Um, Again, I'm not going to make the case that they shouldn't be, but I got to figure they put in Texas A&M or... Iowa, Iowa State, State, USC, they put in I don't those... know. The, I mean, the more I keep thinking about it, the more I keep thinking about it, I think if you have a... I think in this scenario here... I, I just think you, ha- you have to take in consideration of a conference champion. I, I really do. I really do. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it'll it there that fourth spot will be incredibly entertaining if Notre Dame or Clemson gets bludgeoned or if Ohio State loses. Because I just I have no idea what happens to that fourth spot. Yep. But I'll tell you what, I know you're not gonna watch on Monday or Tuesday, whenever they do it. This ranking really does set up for who has a shot for next weekend. Yeah, I think so too, but I'm still so not going to So not, keep a real watch. close eye on Iowa State in Cincinnati on where they're going to be right. And Florida too. I mean, you could put Florida in there too. How far are they going to drop? Okay. Um, let's see. One more in the playoff scenario questions. This one's from Stewart underscore E4 US vet. What is your opinion on why it was never seemed to be an issue about the number of games played to get into the college football playoff until Ohio State was ranked in a spot to make it? Because the number has never been this egregiously different before. Ohio State has won five games. Alabama has won 10. That's twice as many. 
It's it's a it's a I I believe Ohio State belongs in the playoff. I've talked for an hour about how I believe that to be true. We can't sit here and act like it doesn't matter that they've played half of this is why Kyle and I have put this is Kyle Kyle you said early in the show there's no way Ohio State gets ranked number 1. That's a thing you said. Mm-hmm. The fact that yeah. they've only played in 5 well will be 6 games plays into that. Yes, it kind of disqualifies them from the number 1 spot. Yes. I think so. It doesn't disqualify them from the playoff, but it matters. Don't look, we can't sit here and pretend like it doesn't matter that they've played half of the games that Alabama, Notre Dame and Clemson have played. We, we can't act like it doesn't matter. It yep. matters. It does. It's not disqualifying, but it hurts. Okay. Um, let's see, Kyle, we're get this shocker running over. Mm-hmm. So a lot of coaching carousel stuff is happening. Uh, we were going to talk about it, but I think I'm going to nix it from the show. You okay. agree, Kyle? Yep. Let, let's, can I just say this real quick on the coaching carousel? Fickle's not going to Illinois. Yep. Okay. Just, it's not happening. Lovey Smith was fired. Fickle's not going to Illinois. Stop yep. it. All right. Yep. Some more Ask Sloopcast questions not pertaining to the playoff. Uh, Duncan from the discord asks the coaching carousel has begun. Who should we expect to lose to better opportunities? Any Ohio state coaches, Kyle, you think are on the brink of leaving. Ooh. You always have to keep an eye on Kevin Wilson. Yeah. He, he deserves a spot. Um, I, I bet the defensive staff, I think is pretty solid. I mean, um, Don Brown's going to leave. Not, not Don Brown. God forgive me. Um, I'm going to blank on, I, I, I can't ever pull names straight from my head. Um, I, I can't pull names straight from my head. I'm terrible at that, Kyle. Uh, I, I don't know. Are there any coaches that Ohio States could lose off of this staff this year? I, I, th- I think what you, what you said is probably the biggest name. I'm trying to pull a list of all the coaches. That way I kind of go through all of them here and I'm struggling. Apologies. I'm struggling to find, find them all here. All right. So, uh, Tony Alford. I don't uh, know. Gary Coombs. Coombs. No. Nope. Uh, Heartline. No, Ohio, he Larry, said he's staying at Ohio State mm-hmm. long term. Yep, Larry Johnson. No, he, he'll he'll be a Buckeye till he decides he's no longer coaching. Greg Madison. Greg Madison will be a Buckeye, and that's who I meant to say earlier. And again, I apologize, mm-hmm. Coach um, Stud. I almost feel like at some point Greg Madison's going to have to leave so that. Wait a minute, you said Coach Stud? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, he's not going to get poached. If, if he leaves, it will be because Ohio State chooses it. Uh, Coach Washington. Yeah. Al Washington's a name I keep an eye on. I think at some point Greg Madison leaves and Coach Washington becomes a co-defensive coordinator along with Coach Combs. Mm-hmm. If that it, does not happen sooner rather than later, he might leave and become a defensive coordinator elsewhere. But I, I don't see him leaving and becoming a head coach anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Coach Matt Barnes. I, I don't see that happening. And Coach Wilson. Ke- yeah, you always have to keep an eye on Kevin Wilson. Yep. All right. I think those are all the um, assistant coaches there. Uh, you forgot one, but that's okay. I don't think he's leaving oh, either. Oh, Corey Dennis. Yeah, uh, Corey Dennis. The only way Corey Dennis is leaving is if Urban takes a job somewhere else. Mm-hmm. In which case he would follow Urban. All right. Um, Austin information asks who has the last, who, uh, who was the last great linebacker at Ohio state and what's stopping from Ohio state having a linebacker at that level again, seems though the last few years we've had players like 
Brown and Gant, etc., come through and yet weren't able to get elite play. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Ohio State had a setback in their coaching ranks uh, in coach Bill Davis, who I think really hurt some of the development of the players. Um, I think the linebacker play has actually been pretty good this year. Uh, I think that Tough is athletically limited, but does the absolute most he can with the skills he has, with the talent he has. I think Pete mm-hmm. Warner has been very good this year. I think Baron Browning has been very good this year. I think that they had a developmental setback mm-hmm. when Bill Davis was made the linebackers yep. coach. So here's but a I list think of... the play has been solid at the linebacker position this year. Mm-hmm. Here's the list. So who's the last great linebacker? Shazier. That was, he played until 2013. Darren Lee. Darren, Darren Lee, Lee was, was great. I would count him among the great Ohio right. State. So linebackers. that was 2015. McMillan. I think McMillan could have been great. I he, think, he was good. He was good. I think you're also forgetting about Jerome Baker. Um, I'm just going down this list that I'm pull up here. You have Malik Harrison. Mm. I I think Malik Harrison was very good, but if we're talking about capital G great, probably not. Mm-hmm. But very very good. I don't know. I think the last I think the last great was probably Darren Lee, in my opinion. Maybe I'm letting Jerome Baker's pro career, which is going mm-hmm. excellently. Sh- I don't think he played a. Maybe he didn't play a ton at Ohio State because he was behind Darren Lee and like that amazing core of linebackers that Darren Lee played with. Um, Kyle, there's a name in there where Darren Lee, who we're, we're missing names. I know we're missing names here. I know we're missing names. Mm-hmm. Those are those are some that I can that I can think of. Who 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 played alongside Darren Lee on the national title team? Or what if you just uh, googled All American linebackers Ohio State? You guys got to stop asking us questions that force us to do <laughs> the, just to do random name recall because it's obviously not a skill of ours. No, nah, no, nah, I'm. It's going to take me a little bit to find this. Let's, let's find another question real quick here while I'm looking okay. that up. Uh, Stuart underscore for us vet asks Indiana's defensive coordinator just got poached. Will they be as good next year? Will this, uh, with this being said, will Indiana be relevant next year or will the conference be back to normal? Indiana still be good next year. Um, one of the things I saw from Indiana, not this recent week, but the week previous was that they lost Penix and I sort of thought they were going to collapse and they didn't. They put in their next quarterback who was also pretty good, came in and played really well. Losing a defensive coordinator always sucks, especially at a place like Indiana where you don't necessarily have the budget to just turn around and go get someone else who's great. Like Ohio state has a tendency to do, but I, I don't think Indiana was just a defensive coordinator in the same way that I don't think that they proved to just be Penix. So I, I think Indiana has a bit of a stay of relevancy in the Big Ten. Not to say that it's long term, not to say that it's going to be like this for now on, but I think they have the core of players to be relevant for the next couple years. And if they can take that relevancy and turn it into recruiting, then that they can start to build a nice program. Part of the problem with Indiana trying to build a nice program through recruiting is you have Luke Fickle in Cincinnati who's eating up great Ohio talent. Uh, they got a linebacker recruit this last week who had Big Ten offers, lots of Big Ten offers, not Ohio State, but lots of Big Ten offers, and he went to Cincinnati. Cincinnati's for real. As long as Luke Fickle is there, Cincinnati will be for real, and his gobbling up of the second tier Ohio talent is going to have a huge impact on the Michigan, Michigan state, Penn state, Indiana's Illinois of the world. 
you essentially have a brand new team doing Big Ten recruiting who's not in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Did you find a, a list of all American linebackers, Kyle? Um, well, I think the other, I think the other uh, linebackers is probably Malik Harrison and Joshua Perry. Joshua Perry, yeah, we got to include Joshua Perry on that list. I get sort of the opposite of Jerome Baker. We can't let a lack of an NFL career affect or cloud our judgment of what they did. Not that Darren Lee's necessarily had the best mm-hmm. NFL career either, but I think the the other linebacker that was in that 2014 class or that 2014 title team was Curtis Gant. Grant, excuse Curtis me. Curtis Grant. Yeah, yes. and that was a five-star guy who never quite got to that potential, but mm-hmm. yeah, uh Darren Lee, I I Darren Lee or Jerome Baker, I would include among greats at the position. I thought yeah. McMillan was really damn good too. Yeah. Um, I I think we had defensive issues that didn't allow McMillan to play, did not allow him to produce the way he was capable of doing. Mm-hmm. So I I think he probably should have been on that list, and it's not his fault that he might not be. All right, let's answer these last ones real quick here, Jared. Uh, why does it seem, this one from Stuart, uh, why does it seem as though we are the most hated program, not only <laughs> fan base, but media outlets seem to dislike us? One media outlet. I, I, I honestly don't think that. I think most fan bases think that ESPN hates them the most. I That's not an exclusive. See, because when... If if Herb Street or Fowler or one of the ESPN guys says something critical of Clemson, you go, thank you. Finally, someone said it. But when they say something critical of Ohio State, haters, why does everyone hate us? And it's it's that a lot of the times I will see Ohio State fans on Twitter complaining about well, Ohio mistake. State. Complaining about Ohio State. And then one of the national, let's just say ESPN guys, goes and says the exact same thing that they were just bitching about on Twitter two hours before. And then they'll get mad at them for saying the exact same thing that they were just saying two hours before. And I get it's a bit of the thing of I'm allowed to talk shit about my family, but you're not allowed to talk shit about my family. I I get emotionally where that comes from. But I think that's more of our perception than it is mm-hmm. a reality. Yeah. And again, we can't pretend like Ohio State playing half the number of games as Alabama doesn't matter. Now, there are people out there who are trying to turn it into a death sentence that it disqualifies Ohio State. So they're taking it to an extreme. But we also can't pretend like it doesn't matter. Yeah. So we, we just because they're living on this extreme of it being a disqualifier doesn't mean we have to live on the extreme of it doesn't matter because it does matter and it does factor in. But the mm-hmm. truth is somewhere in the middle. It's not disqualifying, but it, 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 it also doesn't not matter. All right. One other question here. Are we able to talk shit to Clemson fans even if we haven't beat them? How do they defend last year's win and then say, don't bring up the refs? I mean, they won the game. We can be mad at the refs, but the fact of the matter is, is that they won the game. Mm-hmm. And Ohio State is 0-3 last three games against Clemson. And we just have to live with that. Yep, you do. That's, that's, there's, we, can, we can be mad at the refs. We can be mad at this. We can be mad I mean, at it's, that. It's just like Ohio State versus the SEC in bowl games. How long, how long we had to put up with that? Uh, there was a pretty long losing streak until it wasn't. Ohio yeah. State hadn't won a national title for decades. That's why there's the, a lot of, until they lot did. Ohio, there's a lot of Ohio State fans. It's like, bring on Clemson this year. I said it on the morning scoop on Friday. Yep. It might not be the easiest path to the national title, but I won't be mad about it either. Yep. Uh, the crew, the crew had, had like the toughest route too. And look where they're at. That's right. One more from Stuart. Why yes. is army superior to Navy? I'll hang up and listen to your question. Listen, Stuart. Um, we have uh, a few veterans 
in our Sloopcast family, and I'm not allowed to pick sides. I know some of, I, I think some of them are Army. I know that our good friend over at Iron Bean Coffee is a Marine, and I think that they technically fall under the, the Navy side of the Army-Navy rivalry. So you're not going to hear me say anything bad about the Navy. Um, I'm just going to say go America. I will say that in this particular day, Army was better than Navy. Yes, that is that factually day. accurate. <laughs> not only that, they were 15 but, points better. But, but I will say Navy is always playing at a disadvantage because it is on land. Well, you see, there you go. All right. Uh, Stuart, you have two more questions in here, but they're relevant to Northwestern. So we're going to hold them for the Wednesday episode. All right. All right. We have national games here. Um, I, I don't, you... No, let's just let's just skip them. We're running over. Um, I'll, I'll say that I am now one pick ahead in the sloop picks as I uh, went five and two this week over Kyle at four and three. And also Dinger was at four and three. So Sean Brawley, you're still the only person to win a T-shirt off of this this year. Hey. Good job, Jared. We we did we did well this this year. Oh, uh, we have one, hey hey we got one more, buddy. We do. We got one more. We got championship weekend still. All right. So you but, have not won yet, and uh, I haven't checked the notes yet. But well, I know we have. You someone. haven't won yet. You haven't won yet. What did I say? Me. I haven't, haven't won yet. Yes. I haven't won to yet. Me. To me. To me. I have. You have. You said we have. You haven't, haven't won yet. To me. Probably. So I said, you haven't, I mm-hmm. haven't. Who, who can prevent forest fires? Okay. <laughs> what, what just happened? I know we have someone, um, we have someone else lined. I forget. I don't have the notes in front of me. Someone else is lined up to do uh slip picks next week. So we'll be doing that. I have one week to defend my crown against Kyle. My, you, you, my you can't defend if you've never won my, my proverbial <laughs> crown, my projected crown, my projected crown. Mm. We are missing. We're missing the Ohio state basketball game, Jared. All right. Let's end this show. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing in Kyle's corner, but again, All right, Columbus guys. crew, Columbus crew with their last game at Matt free stadium. Go yeah, out buddy. with a bang there. Yeah, buddy. Uh, everyone, be sure to check out our t-shirt stores. I'm currently wearing, this is from the 7071 store, the It's All Ohio and It Always Has Been t-shirt. It's Earth, but it's just Ohio. It's a meme. If you, if you don't know it, it's great. Uh, but you can buy that in the 7071 store. Um, you can join us in our Discord. Our Discord was super active and a lot of fun this weekend. If you're not joining our Discord, do so now. If you joined it at one point, but there wasn't that many people in there, and so maybe you gave up on it, sign back in. Sign back in. We got a lot of people going in there. It was super active this weekend, a lot of fun. Um, Guys, Patreon. I need to talk to you guys about the Patreon. And then this is the last thing I do. We have set up a new goal in Patreon. Kyle and I have talked about and we've ba- we've decided to put it in your hands as listeners. We've talked about turning the Sloopcast at the start of season seven through the football season next year, turning it into a daily, a Monday through Friday, a daily podcast. It would be, we'd shorten the episodes down to like a half hour, 40 minutes. So we would do more shorter episodes, a new episode five days a week. And we're talking about adding a second show. So that'd be two shows a week during the off season. But we need your help. Uh, We set up a Patreon goal. It is set at $550 a month. This includes, by the way, money already provided to us by the Iron Bean Coffee Company and the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Their totals are already in that number. We're, I think... We're currently pulling in, I think, I think our cut is like three thirty a month and the actual donation before the Patreon stuff is like three sixty a month. So we're talking about increasing it $200. 
So if everyone listening went and signed up for the $3 tier, we'd be there in a moment. And then you're getting us two days a week during the off season, plus a daily show during the football season, starting season seven. Ooh. So, but it's up to you guys. If you're already donating, please consider donating more. If you've a long time listener, it's only $3 a month. And it gets you access, uh, early access to the episodes, access to the premium channels in the Discord channel or in the Discord server, a lot of other really cool benefits. Uh, you get first selection to be a part of the sloop picks. You get to be a part of the online sloop picks. Um, I don't think we're doing a bowl pick thing this year because I don't know what the bowl games even look like this year. But next year when we're doing the bowl pool, you can be a part of the bowl pool. There's a lot of exclusive events and online stuff that you get to be a part of, uh, including the $3 a month Discord access. There's also free sections in the Discord, by the way, but the premium channels are included in that $3 a month. You get a lot of great stuff, including like cooking tips from the Mad Canadian himself in the Discord server. Lots of cool stuff available at just $3 a month. That's it, $3 a month. Uh, Kyle and I have already uh, begun purchasing new equipment for the Sloopcast in order to just up the quality of, of the show, but it... And that's sort of what's motivating us maybe to uh, push some more people into donating to maybe help buy some of that stuff or pay for some of that stuff that we've already bought. So I'm not trying to hold you ransom on, on that. But as far as us then putting in the time that is required to do a daily show, we kind of need to be able to justify that time with money. So Again, we can start doing a daily version of the podcast starting next season if we can increase that Patreon goal to five fifty a month. So if more Sloopcast is a thing you want, please consider helping us make that happen. So you can figure out how to do that and you can sign up for that at patreon.thesloopcast.com. And if you have any questions about any of that, if you have questions about anything, you can ask us in the Discord server, which again, is mostly free. There are premium channels, but the Discord server is mostly free. Or you can just email me sloopcast at gmail.com and I can answer any questions you might have. Uh, and that's, that's all of that. I feel like doing Kyle already did Kyle's corner. Um, tonight's ending music will be by a band called McCaffrey. So you can check out all of that stuff down in the show notes. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters and what else, Kyle. And support your local Columbus crew team. I was going to say local soccer club, but that works too. I was trying to stay on 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 rhythm on task, but hey, we'll we'll, we'll stick with it. <coughs> uh, once again, this is McCaffrey. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> I need a new one soon. Yes, 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 yes. Um, we with the new with the new logo on it too. Speaking of new, we are approaching our last days in this podcast studio, on my side anyway. Gonna be, gonna be moving this down into the basement. I don't know if it'll be by Wednesday or not or by the Friday episode or not, but that's a thing that will be happening eventually. So we're, we're in the last days of, of this camera angle. So that's fun. Yes. Just have to wait for that new desk and that new computer and all that new stuff to arrive. Mm -hmm. so, I can, so I can get that basement studio going. <sighs> Guys, the, the stuff's already been bought. I'm not trying to hold your ransom on that. Uh, we could have done like a Kickstarter or something like that, but we didn't. Um, please consider donating patreon.thesloopcast.com. It would be huge for us and it's only $3 a month for you. And so it would, it would just be appreciated. That's all. 
All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's end today's show. Once again, we'd like to thank the Mad Canadian. Well, not the Mad Canadian yet. Uh, McCaffrey for ending today's show. And also would like to thank the Mad Canadian. And I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-owned, an American-owned, and of course Ohio-owned, a Toledo-owned, Perrysburg technically, but whatever, coffee company, a coffee roaster. Uh, they are a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. It is freshly roasted to order. It does not sit around in a warehouse or on a grocery store shelf for weeks or months on end. You order it, it's roasted, it's sent to you. Period. Now, if you live in or near Toledo, you can actually even save even more time by just going and picking it up yourself. If you don't live near Toledo, know that you get free shipping on any order over $50. They have subscribe and save services. Uh, all of their beans are fair trade certified, USD organic. Uh, let's see. It's uh, Gift cards are available. Uh, we're still in the Christmas buying season. Gift cards are available. The six-pack sampler is still available. Uh, they have amazing coffees. They have uh, dark roasts such as the Fear No Evil, the Integrity, the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemies, the Rocco. And the Fierce, they have medium roast, such as the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, the Ride or Die, the Cast Iron, the Rocco, which is also available in a medium, uh, the Thor, which is a medium slash dark, the Loki, which is a medium slash light. And they also have flavored coffees, such as a carrot cake, a blueberry, and a mint chocolate chip. All of that and more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian wants us to let you know, why haven't you gotten your special one a case of seasonings yet? Yeah, yeah. You can, you can do the Just Send It, the S which has the S&P bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. The Sweet Heat, which has the Four Horsemen, the Discord, the Two Border, and the Old Fashioned. Or you can get just get the whole hog. One of each 14 seasonings. That the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Save even more by using the promo code Sloopcast10, Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered for Christmas. What's up, YouTube? My face, playlist, watch all of season six. Kyle's face. Subscribe. <laughs> Had to do it one more time, huh? I did. Uh, I did. It either says Buckeye Scoop over there or it says Buckeye Sloopcast over there, depending upon which channel you're watching this on. We don't care which channel you watch this on, uh, but we would appreciate if you subscribe to both of those channels. So uh, please be sure to subscribe both to the Buckeye Scoop and to the Buckeye Sloopcast that would be greatly appreciated. And again, watch wherever you want. We, we don't care which channel you actually watch on, but please subscribe to both. Peace.